So, uh, just finished up this really interesting article about uh, self-reflection tests, SRTs. I talked a bit about that in the previous video uh, on testosterone spikes, but this video is going to go deep into this paper which was published very recently, just a few months ago. And what they wanted to find out is this theory that um, is testosterone related to aggression? Is it related to intuition? So. For example, if you're the type of person who might not take action intuitively, right? you, you think, you mental masturbate a lot, you have to be sure about every action before you take it. If you are one of those people, then pay attention because testosterone could be that link between pausing and doing nothing and actually taking that action. Right now I'm in Medellin, uh, just ordered uh, some coffee and finish this paper so I wanted to tell you uh, exactly what I learned and in the description in YouTube you will see all of my notes so if I miss something in this video then I'm gonna write it there so make sure you pay attention to that now in this video I'm also going to be showing you some figures from the paper and in the YouTube description there will be a link to the paper itself so you can read that it's very very interesting okay so the first thing they did was they wanted to show whether testosterone is linked to intuitive behavior, impulsive behavior, or is it's not. You know, it's is it linked or is it not linked? Now, what's interesting about this study is that it is causal. It shows a causal link. Now, the difference between correlation and causation is correlation is just something that you know, if this thing goes up, then this thing goes up, or if this thing goes down, then this thing goes down. But causation is something that where one thing causes something else. It's very, very different. So all of these studies that you see on YouTube most of the time are correlative, not causal. But this study that I'm showing you is causal, so pay close attention. Now what did they do? They wanted to see whether self-reflection tests scores are linked to testosterone or not. Now what is self-reflection test? It's basically test where on initial instinct you think that the answer is this, but that's actually the wrong answer. The answer is something completely different. Let me give you a few examples that they used. The first example is, let's say there's a bat and a ball, and the bat costs a dollar more than the ball, okay? And the total is, um, a dollar ten how much does the ball cost now right away so again let me let me walk you through this uh, test just just to make sure you understand you're gonna purchase a bat and a ball the bat costs a dollar more than the ball and together they add up to be a dollar ten how much does the ball cost right away you're gonna think oh ten cents Right? Now, if the ball was 10 cents, then the bat would have to be a dollar 10 because it's a dollar more, and the total would be a dollar 20, not a dollar 10. So that's the instinct, that's the first intuitive answer. Now, the right answer is the ball would cost 5 cents because then a dollar more would be a dollar 5 for the bat, and then them together cost a dollar 10. You understand? Now here's the other one. Uh, here's another example for you. There's actually three that they asked. I'm going to give you both of the other two just for fun. If it takes uh, five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, how many minutes would it take a hundred machines to make a hundred widgets? Let me say it again. If it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, how long would it take a hundred machines to make a hundred widgets? Now right away you're gonna think, oh, a hundred, a hundred minutes, right? It's gonna take a hundred machines, a hundred minutes to make a hundred widgets. But that's actually wrong. <laughs> think about it, right? If it takes five machines, 
five widgets, uh, if it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, that means no matter what, making a widget is five minutes. Thus, for a hundred machines to make a hundred widgets, it's still gonna be five minutes. And for a million machines to make a million widgets, it's still gonna be five minutes, because it takes five minutes per machine. Gotcha. So I just got my coffee. Okay. Third question, really, really interesting. Let's say there's a lake, and every day you're gonna put some lily pads into this lake, and you want the whole lake to be full of lily pads. If it takes 48 days, for the lily pads to completely take over the lake, in how many days would the lake be half full? So right away you're gonna think, oh, 24, right? 24, but that's not the case. The right answer is 47 days. Because at the 47th day, it's gonna be half full, and then the 48th day, it's gonna double and it's gonna be full. Right, so this is what self-reflection tests are. We're already at six minutes, it's gonna be a long video. But I wanna really, really make you understand how important testosterone is to listen up. Now, what they did was they made, so this was, by the way, the, the largest uh, testosterone uh, administrated behavior study ever. Okay, it's published this year. So, what they did was they looked at testosterone administered men versus placebo. Right, so they took 243, I believe it was 243 men, and it was all men, right? So that's one of the confounds of the study, or one of the problems that we don't know what happens in women, but this is for men only. So they took 243 men, and they said, okay, we're gonna give half of them, about half, testosterone. They, they, they did it through a gel. They, they applied a, a, a dermal, like a skin gel. Uh, they administered that and the, the other half you know the other half it was placebo it was just a gel which was not testosterone but it was the same texture so people would know the difference this study was also double blind uh, I'm telling you all this just to legitimize the study it was published in psychological science which is a, a good journal now uh, what a double blind study means is the scientist himself doesn't know if he's giving someone a placebo or an actual testosterone gel. So, so it's double blind because we don't want the, there to be a sci scientist administered bias. Okay, it's a very, very good study. Now, what did they do? So these guys would come into the lab and they would uh, get either the testosterone gel administered to them you know, so they would put it on themselves, they would get this little little pellet or this little container full of the testosterone gel or they would get the placebo. And then they would take a test, right, the CRT. And we wanted to know whether the CRT uh, would make the testosterone administered guys perform worse. That was the hypothesis because it's been hypothesized over and over that men with high testosterone take decisions without thinking, right? There's this system one and system two. There's a, a it's called a double, a, a, a two system framework where the first system is intuitive. You know, you make the decision fast. And the second system is more uh, deliberate. You know, you think about it. There's more mental cognition, judgment, processing involved. So for example, when you take an SAT test or some standardized test or some exam, you're using system two because you wanna check your math, you wanna check your algebra, make sure you didn't do the mistakes. But when it's something like you wanna approach a girl, she's right there, right? Or you wanna fight somebody in a bar and, and if you don't fight, you're gonna die or you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna get hurt. Or you need to make a decision really fast in terms of physical stuff, right? Where even if you wait for two seconds, bad stuff will happen. Something that's more uh, life-threatening, more visceral, more intuitive, more uh, like instinctual, right? That's where system one comes in. And system two always checks system one. So in this, SRT, the self-reflection tests, system one was you make the wrong decision and system two would enable you to correct that response by correcting system one. Now, what they wanted to, the hypothesis was guys who would have this testosterone administered would actually have a 
uh, lower uh, score on the SRT. They would get more incorrect responses, okay? So that's sort of the, so let me take you through the process first. I'm gonna show you a figure as well. So uh, let's go through the first figure, okay? Here you see that, you know, I'm looking at my computer here and, and talking to you at the same time so you can understand. I'm gonna show you the figure as well. So on the x-axis, you see testosterone in, in uh, picograms per milliliter, and then you see the entire uh, experiment as it was done, okay? So the first was, uh, the, you know, they did a hand scan, they, you know, they compared the digits, you know, forget about that, it's not very important. Then they take sample A. Sample A is, um, how much testosterone does this person have in the beginning in the morning right so you see that placebo as well as testosterone they're the same right so they just wanted to make sure that the two sample sizes were exactly the same then they apply the gel to everyone right so the gel is either uh, testosterone or it's placebo it's just some this is some some fucking chemical whatever it's not testosterone then there's a tea loading period, so they wait, right? So this is based on previous experiments with the other scientists have tested for how long it takes testosterone to actually activate in the body, uh, according to this gel. So that's the tea loading period. Then they look at, the, now they take another sample, they call it sample B. And here you'll notice right away that the testosterone gel works. The level of testosterone, and oh, by the way, they're measuring saliva testosterone and, and salivary testosterone is not like you know they can't do a blood test because obviously that would be hard and salivary testosterone is considered to be a proxy to endogenous testosterone level so we can trust to an extent that this is legitimate because it, they've used salivary testosterone because there's no other way to do it right now we don't have the technology so now they take sample B and you see very clearly that there is a significant difference between uh, people who were administered testosterone and people who uh, weren't, right? Now you go through the behavior of tasks, the SRT. All three questions are shown to these people and they're given unlimited time. There's no limit, right? They didn't want to uh, have like time affect this, this result. So there's no time that you take as, as long as you want. And I think the average was like five minutes that the people took. Now there's, uh, now they take another sample. Because remember, testosterone changes throughout the day. So they wanted to even not have that bias. So they were taking multiple samples just to make sure that testosterone didn't fluctuate during the day. So now they take sample C and again, you see a significant difference between uh, testosterone applied and placebo. And then they do another series of behavioral tasks. Now the first series was the SRTs. The second series are mathematical arithmetic tests. Now, the reason they did that is because they wanted to make sure that there wasn't some effect that the people who were better or worse at SRTs were just better at math. So they wanted to control for the mathematical skills of these uh, clients, of these uh, subjects. So, the, so the, the test was very simple. You show a bunch of two-digit two numbers and you have uh, them added up and they tell you the, 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 the sum, the, the result after adding up the total. So that's what that behavioral task was. Now, if this is unclear to you, the second math test, I'm gonna put all this in the description too so you can very easily know what the hell is going on. Now, once the behavioral task is done, uh, now there's a payout, they get money. Now remember, uh, you know, we're already at 13 minutes here. I wanna keep you interested. This is very interesting because you're eventually gonna find out if the people who are administered testosterone get more incorrect results. And if they do, then that would, the hypothesis, the proposal would be that guys with high testosterone take action right away. And guys with low testosterone think and mental masturbate and, and sit there and do nothing. Very, very important for you. So then after the payout, the last sample, again, there's a huge difference between testosterone and placebo. So we know it's legitimate, it makes sense. All right, now let's get into the data. I'm gonna pull this here. I'm gonna pull up uh, the data for you. Okay, the first thing you'll see is this graph. Okay, now this is, uh, 
the correct answers of the math test, right? This is just the, the, the simple test that they took, the arithmetic, just to show that there's no difference between uh, people who had placebo and people who had testosterone. It's the same, which means that testosterone doesn't affect uh, just like math skills, okay? That's, this is very important. So this is uh, the figure for that. Now the next figure I'm showing you uh, is... Aha, uh -huh, the widgets. Now this is the question with, you remember the widgets question I asked you? The five machines to, to, takes five minutes to cause five widgets. How many would 100 machines, how long would it take for 100 machines to make 100 widgets? The answer was five. Now here, if you look, okay, so what are these three things? Okay, so on the left you see proportion answers, okay? The, the first two bar graphs that you see, right? And the two little asterisks you see. And, and on the on the x-axis it says five this is the number of correct answers okay so you'll see that there's a significant difference the two asterisks means that P is less than 0.01 this is just a st statistically significant result right that's why the two asterisks if it was three asterisks it's even more significant it's P is less than 0 0.001 if it was one asterisk, it would be just P is less than 0.05, and that's what the threshold is for statistical significance. If you're not sure about what the hell this means, comment below and I'll be happy to explain what statistical significance means. But, but for now, just for this uh, video, understand that two asterisks means that there was a significant di difference between the number of correct answer between placebo and testosterone. So the first set of bar graphs where it says five on the bottom, you see that the testosterone administered subjects had a lower uh, number or proportion of answers that were correct. Okay, makes sense. Because once you get testosterone, you're not gonna answer correctly because you're doing these intuitive judgments. That's the hypothesis. Now the second column is the number of incorrect answers. Okay, that's where the hundred is. And you see that testosterone allows for more incorrect answers. And the other was just like if they did some weird answer and, and that's not significant. So, so don't worry about the other so much. Now we go to the next question. Okay. It is uh, A, B, ah, the bat and ball, okay. Let me see what I just showed you. I sh oh, I showed you D. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm showing you C now. I'm going, kind of going backwards, it doesn't matter. And same thing you see here, right? For the bat and ball, the first column, testosterone administered had lower number of correct answer, a higher number of incorrect answers. Okay, so even in this question, it applies. And then the last one, the lily pads. Remember the 48 days it takes? I'm posting these questions in the description so you can read it again if you want. And now you see again, uh, you have less correct answers, which is where the 47 is. And then the 24, you have more incorrect answers. And look, now it's three asterisks. So it's even more statistically significant, which is crazy. So now you see that. So that's, uh, that's E. Now let me take you, let me see if there's a F at all, A, B, C, I think that, oh yeah, the last one was everything together, I believe, where is it, you got question one, question two, ah, okay, here, here it is, oh, we, we did math, math correct, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, that's it, that's it, uh, that's basically the whole, yeah, that's the whole thing, now, that's crazy. Every single self-reflection test, um, we see that testosterone-administered clients, testosterone-administered subjects, have a lower number of correct answers, a higher number of incorrect answers, and the hypothesis is now true, it's correct. Basically, it shows, or it, it, it kind of proposes that guys who have high testosterone will take action will we'll take like that you know that massive action thing we talk about you know taking an action and then thinking whether it was good or not high testosterone guys will do that now you're gonna say well sure but you're gonna get in a bar fight you're gonna go to jail or you're gonna get in uh, some trouble with uh, the police if you do that all the time or, or you might commit some crime sure exactly true but does that apply to you 
you right now watching me on YouTube, are you the type of guy that already has high testosterone and doesn't need to go higher? Are you the type of guy who never takes action? Because if you're the guy who is not ever taking action, doing things all the time, look at a guy like me, okay? I'm giving you a, a, a very practitioner's example, right? Once I finished my PhD, I moved to Vegas the week after. I didn't think what was gonna happen. I did it. Then, I went to strength camp to live at a gym for eight months. I didn't think, I did it. And then I thought, oh shit, is this right or wrong? And then I was like, ah, it's, it's okay, right? And all those decisions that I made as I was boosting my testosterone helped me become the person I am today. And when I came here to Medellin, I didn't pack shit, I just came here. You see other videos on the channel explaining what the hell I did in the last three weeks, one month. I literally didn't pack my bags and I moved to Medellin. I took that action without thinking, thinking, thinking. So I'm just letting you know that in my life, as I've been boosting my testosterone over the years, I have been able to take action without reflecting so much. I, I'm getting that ability to do that from the physiological hormonal changes in my body. Now if you wanna do that, if you're the type of guy who doesn't take action, who always reflects and is always doing the system too, then you might want to boost your testosterone ASAP because those hormonal changes will allow you to take that action, be more aggressive, be more instinctual, be more visceral, be more emotional, right? And, and I'm gonna leave you with this. They've even done studies where they did fMRI, which is a functional magnetic resonance imaging. It's basically, uh, you're imaging the brain. It's like a radiology test. And they showed that certain parts of the prefrontal cortex, which enable you to inhibit certain visceral, instinctual responses, right? There, there's always this concept of the prefrontal cortex is what is bigger between our our ancestors, you know, our, our evolutionary ancestors and us. We have a bigger prefrontal cortex. And that is because we are able to plan. We are able to inhibit our emotions, our, our visceral limbic system responses. So the limbic system is where the amygdala is. That's where the emotional centers of the brain are. That's where you take action without thinking. And what they found is there's a decoupling between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. And it, it specifically, I believe the, the area was the orbitofrontal, um, uh, orbitolateral, or it's, it's, I'm gonna link it in the description. I don't remember the exact region in the prefrontal cortex where this was shown, but I'm gonna put that in the description. I don't wanna tell you the wrong thing here. But essentially there's this decoupling between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system and that allows us to be more instinctual and be more emotional and be more primitive. So they've even found a mechanism inside the brain that enables us to do this and that is dependent on testosterone and androgen receptors that are located in the prefrontal cortex. And we even know that. There's studies that show even that. So I'm actually gonna link all of those studies. I think there might be two or three studies in the description. Uh, it's, this is the 20, almost a 25 minute video. If you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up, like button, share this with your friends who might be interested in boosting testosterone. A lot of more uh, testosterone related content to come uh, on this channel. Uh, I, I'm, I'm finally getting this interest, uh, uh, interest, I'm finally getting time to focus on content rather than all this other shit, so I'm, I'm gonna bring more to you. And uh, comment below, let me know if boosting your testosterone has enabled you to take more action if you've actually seen this in your life and whether um, you've seen other people who will have high testosterone who are taking more action than you are so comment below and let me know the answer to that question and uh, yeah that's it uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already just click the subscribe button and yeah man let's make this happen thank you for listening I really appreciate it tons of gratitude without you I don't exist and uh, yeah, man, science is fun. See you next time.